Welcome to the Seriously Social podcast with your host, Simone Douglas. This episode features an interview with Bevan Jones from Legends with Bevo. All right, so today on the Seriously Social podcast, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Bevan Jones from Legends with Bevo. So I've known Bevan now for on and off for about, I reckon, five years because we met uh, on LinkedIn originally. Um, So, Bevan, thank you for joining me today. Simone, great to be here, and I'm very excited about your new podcast. Thanks for getting me on. Well, you're actually officially our very first guest, so I'm pretty excited by that too. Well, (laughs) I'm very, very privileged then. (laughs) So, um, I guess one of the things um, that would be great to talk about is you you really do, you run an entire show um, by finding your guests and networking online. What do you think is... You know, the secret to your success in terms of that, how are you making that work for you? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, especially the last few months with COVID, that's been a really interesting period because I've been um, able to connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn. You mentioned LinkedIn before, and, and that's been wonderful. Um, and especially with all these people wanting to, you know, or having a lot more spare time to be able to do Zooms. And um, I've never even heard of Zoom before COVID. So it's been a bit of a blessing in disguise, obviously terrible situation we're in, but that's been really one of the positives is that I've been able to get to chat to all these amazing people around Australia, around the world. Um, and yeah, just in terms of networking, it's just been a case of just reaching out to them, not being shy, like I'm not shy to talk to people in person or online. Um, it's Obviously, you've got to be prepared for a rejection and that sort of thing, but that's okay because everyone's busy and some people say yes, some people say no, but I figure the more people you try, the more likelihood you've got of getting people and it's been an amazing few months for, for Legends with Bebo and um, I've sort of my my views and, and I guess my reach has increased a lot over the last few months and, and that's been by, by networking, reaching out to people and that sort of thing and um, by yeah, just having that sort of will and desire to just have a crack and not yeah. be afraid to get rejected by people. Well, I think you raise a really interesting point because being willing to ask for exactly what you want is how I've ended up with three businesses uh, and doing what I'm doing today. So, you know, go back eight years ago, I saw a lady uh, speak, Hazel Walker. She was out from the States. Uh, and she said that too often people don't ask for what they want because they're terrified of hearing the word no. Um, what has been the most amazing thing that you've managed to achieve just by asking? I probably, well, there's been a, f- a few different ones because I've had some incredible people the last few months and I sort of wouldn't want to single out anyone in particular. But I guess um, speaking off air before, one of the most um, unreal ex- things, I suppose, was that I was watching The Voice on a, on a uh, Saturday afternoon, just at home, switching channels, just chilling out a bit. And um, on came a guy called Mark Furs. Now, he's previously been on Home and Away and I used to love Home and Away back in the day. I don't get to watch it as much nowadays. So I don't hold that against me, people that are watching or listening out there. Um, and... He was just a, a really good performer and just had that really nice laid back sort of vibe about him. So I thought, you know, I might just give it a crack and just message him on Instagram and, and see if he replies. And if he doesn't, that's fine. But um, he actually replied that same night and managed to interview him. him and he was just one of, the, one of the nicest blokes ever. He's actually really good friends with Chris Hemsworth. Okay. So we spoke about their friendship and he's also good friends with Guy Sebastian as well. So spoke about that and... Yeah, just I just sort of found that he was just so down to earth and so nice, and that's a perfect example of, of of reaching out to people. And like I said, I don't want to sort of single out people as such, but I thought that was a really good example of not being afraid to contact people that you think might be great for a chat and go to for anyone, I suppose. Yeah, so, and I think yeah. um, with that, you often find that if you're reaching out to people with the idea of just starting to form a relationship that will carry over time. Uh, that people are happy to have a chat because you're not selling at them yeah. necessarily. So uh, it's definitely been my experience that when you go out of your way to just help people for the sake of helping people, then the universe delivers up in return. So what has been, um, I guess, the most interesting thing that's happened to you in your career across the board in terms of that kind of thing, someone unexpectedly you know, connecting the dots for you or helping you in some way that you didn't think they would? Yeah, that's a really good question. There's been a lot of examples of that, but um, I guess going back to, again, the last few months, um, one really unexpected situation was getting to chat to to Diesel, which Mm. is, um, or or he was also obviously known as Johnny Diesel back in the day and now um, better known as Mark Lozotti. And he sort of played 
cry and shame in you know whilst on the zoom chat and that was one of the coolest things ever and um and i thought wow this is really cool like i contacted someone from mushroom records that i sort of connected with a couple of years ago and um just again a bit like mark before i just mark first i just yeah. reached out to them and said have you guys got anyone that might be out for a chat and um was expecting to say no nah, you know everyone's too busy blah, blah blah with their own sort of stuff trying to deal with this COVID situation yeah. and then i got this email saying diesel's free this friday and really fell off my chair i'm like diesel that'd be unbelievable and then found myself chatting to him and and yeah he was just such a nice bloke as well yeah. so down to earth and just to hear his his music journey and um you know and after the the chat he spoke we spoke a bit as well and one thing i find is that these people that sort of speak to you after the chat and are prepared to give their time just shows how nice people they are and you know they're sometimes there's perception that people can be arrogant and people don't give the time day to people but i don't think that's always the case mm. you know everyone has a busy, busy lifestyle and um you know the, the fact they're giving you 15 20 minutes sometimes longer just shows that they're you know really nice people and I just find that really refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, like you said, there's an assumption often that people aren't, uh, what's the word, available. And so you don't ask. And then there's also the thing of, you know, too many people then go chasing successful people, trying to sell them things as opposed to having those conversations. Um, And one of my favourite experiences in terms of just asking randomly for something was... I went and spoke at Social Media Revolution in 2014, so it seems like a lifetime ago now, but it was in Canberra, and all I did was I sent a tweet to the guy that was organising it going, are you looking for keynote speakers? Because it was the first big social media conference that had really been put on in Australia. And he said, actually, I am. I'm like, well, if you foot the bill for my flights and accommodation, I'll come talk. And he's like, okay. So I flew over there, um, delivered my keynote. But after I delivered my keynote, one of my friends was a staffer uh, for one of the MPs over there. So he organized for me to go and have a back of house tour of Parliament House oh. and all of this other stuff, which was really, really cool. Um, and, but then um, I had some more conference stuff that I had to do. And I messaged him afterwards and I said, oh, where are you? And he goes, oh, I'm at the press club. Um, it's the parliamentary friends of the rugby. We're watching the state of origin. And he goes, if you want to come by, I can get you in. And I was oh. like, no way. Oh. So, wow. Yeah. So I spent the night in Canberra drinking with, you know, the parliamentary friends of the rugby um, and then ended up at a bar with a bunch of MPs who shall obviously remain nameless. <laughs> um, but it was, it, that was the first time I kind of looked at my life and went, if you're prepared to ask for what you want, your life can read like a bucket list. What's it? And it really does. Like yeah. ever since then, um, every time I am a smart ass, that's what I call it when I ask for what I want, I just like being a smart ass. Um, things, opportunities rain from the sky and people open doors. So the best example was uh, last about four weeks ago in the middle of COVID, we're in the middle of shutdown um, and obviously owning a pub, the pub is closed, I'm not making any revenue. Um, and my landlord rings me and, um, and I said to him, oh, are you ringing me because you've bought another pub? And he's like, no, why would I do that? And I said, oh, well, you know, because if it was a pub in Gawler, I'd be keen. He goes, there are pubs for sale in Gawler. I'm like, well, go shopping and then we can chat. And oh. so it looks like, you know, in, in another couple of months, we'll have another pub out that way. Awesome. Um, and all because I just, you know, threw it out there. So I think if there was one thing on your bucket list that you really wanted to achieve in the next, I don't know, in the next two years, um, what would it be? Because I think maybe someone that's listening to the podcast, maybe they can help you achieve it. Who knows? Yeah, there's a, I guess there's a couple of things in terms of that. Um, one is sort of going forward. I was asked this the other day, what do you want to do in terms of Legends of Bevo? And I'm not a comedian. Well, some people say I can, I can be a funny guy, but I don't try to be. Um, so I can never say I'm going to be like Road McManus. But I'd love to have my own talk show. Yeah. Because I think I have the ability to be able to talk to people and I've been told I'm good at, good at interviewing people and have that ability to get guests on. So I think maybe um, like Graham Norton, but again, without that com- comedic sort of side of things, yeah. that would be really cool going forward as a, as a bucket list thing. In terms of interviews, I'd love to interview someone from overseas, like obviously Michael Jordan would be the ultimate, but that yeah. would be a massive ask. Yeah. I just watched The Last Dance and I was like, wow, this is just incredible. But that would be, oh, I, I don't know, 
seriously, that would be the, the obviously the most impossible task ever to be able to chat to him, but it would be just be absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, or someone else from overseas, because I really want to try and grow Legends of Ever overseas as well, because I yeah. think it's got a, um, it's it's great to have it in Australia, but I think people overseas would love to. They love Aussies, yeah. so I think it would be really cool to get over there as well. So someone from overseas, whether it be in person or via, or maybe not at the moment with the COVID, but maybe on Zoom or something yeah. would be on the bucket list for sure. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Do you think like from a digital perspective, a step to starting a talk show environment would be to do something like on Instagram TV or Facebook Watch? Would that be where you might start with that kind of stuff? Yeah, that would be really cool for sure. Yeah, that's something definitely that, um, that I could look at as a possibility definitely yeah yeah well and the advantage then with like the zoom technology is of course they don't have to be right there with you even so that geographic disbursement isn't really an issue yeah so you're talking more like a live perspective though yeah yeah, pre-recorded yeah 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 that for sure that would be that's something i've been looking at actually because i there are people i like watching other podcasts and what other people do and there's a, a sort of show called the chat pack it's in in melbourne and they sort of do something a little bit similar to me but whereby there's um but there's two other people rather than just me by myself. And yeah. um, they sort of do like Zoom live every Tuesday night from 7.30 to 9.30. And um, that seems to work pretty well. And I've actually started doing my own show with another guy um, called Jordan Biggie Steffens. You may have seen yeah. before doing the plane pool a couple of years ago when mm-hmm. he pulled the Qantas plane. And um, we did that sort of pre-recorded on Zoom. But definitely I would actually like to look into it and I've had a bit of time to try and work out how to do Instagram or Zoom live. Yeah. Um, because I think that's, whether it be with Legends of Bevo or the Bevo and Biggie show, which is the one I do with, with Geordie, um, I think either of them definitely have yeah, have legs for sure. So, yeah. so yeah. if you were going to give advice to a business owner that's perhaps terrified of um, video, seeing themselves on film, hearing themselves on radio or on podcasts, uh, what advice would you give them? That's a really, really good question um, and one I can definitely answer because um, a couple of years ago I got my dream job as a breakfast announcer in the Riverland and now for those people that sort of don't understand country radio, it's very different to, to working in Metropolitan Radio. So for example, uh, say Joe's and Soda with their show on 102.3, um, their breakfast show on Mix, they have producers, they have probably five or six staff helping them out every morning. Um, I was actually alone by myself doing the paneling, I was doing the producing, I was announcing, I was doing everything by myself. Now, I'd never really done much paneling before, so the first couple of weeks I was massively a fish out of water, and it was like basically a sink or swim situation, and those first couple of weeks I was like, oh my goodness, I can't do this, this is so hard, and I'm li- but I'm living my dream doing what I wanted to do, um, so it was back in September 2017, I was up at up in the Riverland, working on Berry in Berry, sorry for Five RM mm-hmm. on on radio there, and um, unfortunately after six months, we won't go into it, but um, they sort of they said I wasn't sort of uh, what they were looking for on radio, but um, as we all know, it's a pretty brutal industry, and it I won't is, go into yeah. to detail, but that's that's the way it goes, and it's actually made me more of a resilient person, if anything, and that's a t- topic for another time. But um, I guess in terms of that, it was definitely a case of being thrown in the deep end and. Uh, those first couple of weeks were terrifying but by the end of those six months and I guess that's what frustrated me about losing the job because I felt like I'd really nailed it and I was getting the paneling good and everything was yeah. was going really well I'd sort of managed to get some huge names on you know like Carrie mm-hmm. Ann Kennelly's Amanda Keller's yeah. um, Lynn McGranger from Home and Away you know some yeah. um, some big sports stars as well and um, I felt like I was starting to really nail it and then obviously um, yeah the, the general manager wasn't happy but that's fine that's everyone has their own opinions on things um, but I suppose I, it was just a real challenge at the start for those first couple of weeks, like I mentioned to you. But I can just I learned so much from that, and it just goes to show that if you're prepared to do something and have a crack, even though it can be terrifying at first, yeah. um, it's it's all worthwhile. And I think those six months were just such an amazing experience for me. And um, in a way, it's yeah, like I said, it's made me a stronger, more resilient person. And um, I feel like I'm doing better now than what I was yeah. back then, anyway. So, do you think that makes yeah. you more? makes you more prepared to take a risk. Yeah. So in in business, I think, because you've raised a couple of points that I think are critical for success in business, which is uh, you have to take that leap of faith. Even if you don't really know how to do all the things that are in front of you, it's very much a case of, um, you know, not uh, taking your bat and ball and going home. So being prepared to keep moving and prepared to do what it takes and learn what you need to learn. 
Um, and sometimes that means that we're like ducks on the water. Uh, but it's, you know, that's very much how my whole career has gone that way, you know, in terms of, you know, I've landed jobs, you know, historically that perhaps I shouldn't have been able to land. Um, and I've, I've worked really bloody hard to well learn done. what it is that I need to learn. And it sounds like you very similarly did the same thing in your radio gig. Yeah, yeah, credit to you. And, and yeah, I can 100% agree with that because I gave up a permanent job in government that was paying a hell of a lot more money yeah. to take the job in the Riverland. And when I came back to Adelaide, I was basically left with nothing. But And then I took another big risk by starting what was Chewing the Fat. Um, got yeah. rebranded to Legends with Bebo in, late last year. So... Um, and even then, I've been really fortunate to have a supportive uh, partner now, wife, because, you know, from, I've spent a lot of money on Legends of Bevo the last couple of years and paying camera people and, yeah. you know, it's social media boosts and what have you. But I feel like now it's starting to pay off and I'm heading in the right direction with it. And again, I'm like you, Simone, I'm definitely a risk taker. And But I believe that there's no point... Um, doing something, spending sort of five days a week or 40 hours a week, whatever it might be, working a job that you just hate. And I was in that situation. And yeah. now, even though my pay is not what it was in the government, I'm, I'm loving my life at the moment, doing what I love. And it just goes to show, if you're passionate about something and you're not enjoying where you are with your work situation, life's too short to be stuck doing a nine to five job you hate. Yeah, Looking at absolutely. the clock and stuff like that. So yeah, each to their own. Some people are happy to just go yeah. through the motions and um, more just happy to earn their good money and then go on holidays or whatever and don't care about their work but my priority I'd rather enjoy my work more and earn less money than have you know 120, 120 grand a year doing something I hate if yeah. that makes sense no it does so. and I think that's a really nice spot to wrap it up in terms of um, you know life is too short you only get one of them after all uh, so you know if you're sitting there maybe you're listening to this and you're not really sure where to start or whether to start and you're in a job that you hate and you're looking at the clock and resenting the fact it's Sunday night and you have to go into Monday um, then you know maybe now's the time to start thinking about what it is that really gets you excited about life and embrace that ask the people in your network to help open the doors so you can make it happen so that you can live a life that you love like Bevan. So Bevan, thanks very much for joining me today. It's been a blast, Simone. Thanks so much for having me. All the very best with the podcast. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Seriously Social Podcast. See our website for more details at www.socialmediaaok.com.au slash podcast. Check the show notes for credits, music used in the program, and more details about our guests.